When the original HTC EVO 4G launched nearly two years ago, it quickly became one of Sprint's and HTC's most popular smartphones thanks to beloved features such as being the first 4G connected smartphone in the world thanks to its WiMAX connectivity, quirky features such as a front facing camera and a kickstand on the rear, and also a large display that became Android's hallmark anti-iPhone campaign. Since then, Sprint has launched a number of smartphones and a tablet in the EVO franchise, but none in that family has proven to be quite as successful or popular as the original. Now, nearly two years later, Sprint has a successor to the EVO 4G in the form of the HTC EVO 4G LTE. On paper, there appears to be a lot that is similar between the first generation device and its latest uh, generation device. However, you get a lot of improvements, most notably 4G LTE connectivity, which is faster than 4G WiMAX. And now that the Now Network also has an iPhone in its portfolio, can the HTC EVO 4G LTE be quite an important device for Sprint as the original was? Can the HTC EVO 4G LTE be popular for consumers? I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile and Notebooks.com. Please join me in this video review as we find out the answers to all your important questions about the HTC EVO 4G LTE. And here in front of me, I have the retail packaging box for the HTC EVO 4G LTE on Sprint's Now Network. The box, the device comes in a 100% recyclable packaging material, which shows Sprint's ongoing and continuing efforts to being an eco-friendly company. Inside the box, once you open it up, you have the smartphone, which ships here on the top tray. Let's go ahead and remove the phone from the tray. And this is the device. Once you lift up the, smart, uh, the tray, you have a number of accessories inside, such as this uh, micro USB to USB charge and sync cable. You also have a wall uh, charger. And then this little packet here, which includes a getting started guide, a number of safety and warranty product information, as well as a little envelope here to send in your old smartphone to recycle with Sprint. Let's go ahead and set aside all the packaging materials and accessories aside. Taking a look at the smartphone, the one thing that you'll notice right away is that the 4.7 inch Super LCD 2 screen dominates the front of the device. The Super LCD 2 technology gives you excellent viewing angles both from side to side and from top to bottom. The display is a 4.7 inch 1280 by 720 720p HD resolution display so you get crisp text and images on the screen with bright and vibrant colors. The display is also very good at reading or viewing outdoors even under direct sunlight. Let's go ahead and take a look at the device and some of the hardware features on the top of the display. To the top you'll notice that there is a mesh earpiece speaker grill here for taking phone calls. On the right hand side of the earpiece speaker and embedded in the mesh grill is an LED light that flashes whenever you have notifications. There's also a front facing uh, web camera here to the right of the mesh LED speaker. Moving to the bottom of the device, you'll notice that on the bottom you have the three Android navigation keys that are typical of Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. What's different from the EVO 4G LTE compared to previous generations of EVO smartphones and tablet is that the three keys here are not encased in a bubbly um, circular motif that's typically found on devices beginning with the original HTC EVO 4G on Sprint. Moving around to the sides of the device, you'll notice that here you have a very uh, crisp brushed stainless steel bezel that surrounds the device and gives it a nice feel to the device. Not only that, but it also adds to the strength and rigidity of the device in helping the HTC EVO 4G LTE maintain its slim and sleek profile. On the top of the device, you'll notice here that there is a uh, noise cancellation microphone. To the left of that, you do have an ear or three and a half millimeter earphone jack. And then on the right hand side, you have a power button that's uh, embedded with the brushed stainless steel finish. On the left hand side here, you do have a micro USB charge and sync port. And then 
towards the bottom here you do have your microphone for taking uh, phone calls. On the right edge of the device, you do have the volumes up and down uh, rocker switch here at the top and on the bottom you do have a dual stage camera shutter button. Unfortunately, not like the Sony Xperia S, you can't hold down the camera button while the phone is off or when the phone is locked to activate the camera. You do have to unlock the phone first in order to activate the camera using the hardware shutter button. On the back of the device, you'll notice that HTC went with a number of different motifs, colors, and materials for the back side. On the top here, you do have a very glossy piano black plastic finish, and that finish surrounds the, um, the camera pod and the LED uh, variable lighting flash light here. The camera is an 8 megapixel camera that's also capable of recording 1080p HD resolution videos. While the 8 megapixel resolution sounds similar to the HTC Evo 4G released two years ago, HTC made a number of improvements to the camera, including uh, changing the optics. And here the camera is surrounded by this uh, concentric circle ring, which helps to protect the lens of the camera as well. So not only has the lens been improved and the lens been protected here by this, um, by this uh, little ringed uh, sort of lens cover, although it doesn't really fully cover the lens, um, it does help to eliminate dust and dirt from getting trapped inside the camera lens while you're taking the phone in and out of your purse or pocket. Towards the bottom here, you do have um, what appears to be a metal band, and this red metal band follows the Evo 4G's uh, red scheme, and you can see a little bit of red around the protruding camera pod here. Um, this red metal band also serves dual pro purpose in that it also provides for a kickstand to be plopped open. The nice thing about this kickstand is that, as you can hear here, is that it's spring-loaded, which means that it will stay open um, with even with the weight of the phone on it. So not only can you place the phone down this way in traditional HTC Evo fashion, but you can also place it in a reverse style. The nice part about placing it upside down like this with a kickstand on the bottom is that it leaves you room here to plug in your USB charging cable so you can go ahead and watch a video or a movie and still have your phone charged that way. And then on the bottom here, you do have what looks to be a matte finish. So it's a matte coating. It's not a soft touch, but it does feel a little bit soft and um, very comfortable. It doesn't feel as cold, and it is a metal uh, uh, cover. So this cover here probably covers the non-user replaceable battery. So unlike the original Evo 4G, the 4G uh, Evo 4G LTE does not have a user, user serviceable battery. Now up here at the top where the power button is, you'll notice that there's a little notch here and if you put in your fingernail, you can go ahead and pry off the top part of the back. This is the black plastic uh, finish piano black uh, coating here. And you can see that there is a micro SDHC card slot. The phone does come with 16 gigabytes of storage and one gig of RAM, although you can augment the storage capacity with up to 32 gigabytes uh, micro SDHC card. A memory card is not included in the box for the phone, um, but you can go ahead and purchase one separately, either through Sprint or any third party retailer. This phone does support Sprint's faster 4G LTE connectivity. Um, however, unlike AT&T and Verizon, this phone's uh, micro SIM or SIM card for the LTE connection is embedded inside the device, so it's not user replaceable, which means you can't easily swap out phones just by you know, taking out the SIM and placing it in a different phone. You'll actually have to go through Sprint to activate each uh, new device individually if you want to swap phone for a day for power users. Other than that, um, it's, the phone has very minimal branding. On the front top here, you do have the HTC logo, and on the rear, you have a very muted uh, Sprint logo here towards the bottom of the matte finish, and also the HTC uh, logo here that's embossed inside the metal um, part of the back battery cover. 
On the bottom here, you do have the loudspeaker, which works um, adequ adequately well. The one thing to note is that although this phone does support Beats Audio, and it is a Beats Audio handset, much like its cousin, the HTC One X and the AT&T HTC One X, this phone does not have Beats Audio branding. Let's go ahead and unlock the device. You'll notice that the phone does utilize um, HTC Sense. It's the new HTC Sense 4.0 on top of Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. On the software side, users will notice that HTC has chosen instead to slim down its software package with HTC Sense 4.0. So rather than apps such as HTC Peeps for um, Twitter and HTC Friendstream for Facebook, HTC opted to go the minimalist route and remove some of those custom apps. Instead, if you want to go to Facebook, you can go ahead and use the pre-installed Facebook application, which is pretty much what you would get on Android market. Twitter isn't included, but you can go ahead and download the Twitter app as well. HTC did include um, a custom twi Twitter syncing application so that you can go ahead and sync uh, pictures and images from your contacts to your um, HTC contact book. However, the custom um, Twitter application is not included on this version of HTC Sense for a cleaner and more consistent user experience across with other Android smartphones. Opening the app tray, uh, another thing that you'll notice is that it's traditional HTC fashion which um, launches this app launcher here. You'll also notice that Sprint has um, restrained itself from including any of its custom Sprint applications, including Sprint TV, um, NASCAR, and other Sprint applications. You can go ahead and still download those applications if you so desire through the Google Play Store, and there is a shortcut to the Play Store here from the app tray. The phone does have a dual core 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, processor. It's the S4 processor, so it is very fluid and functional, and you'll notice that animations and graphics um, move with no lag. You can go ahead and add widgets or custom applications and shortcuts to your home screen here as well, just by tapping and holding on the home screen. And then you can go ahead and choose on which home screen to go ahead and add um, your widgets. So for instance, if we wanted to add the analog wi uh, clock widget, you can go ahead and see the home screen that still has space that's not highlighted in red, and go ahead and drag and drop it there, and then you can go ahead and customize it the way you want. To remove a widget, just tap and hold and then drag to remove, or you can go ahead and edit the widget by dragging it to the edit button here at the top. We covered HTC Sense 4.0 a little bit in our HTC One X video for AT&T, so if you're curious about the software, you can go ahead and go to the One X video on Gotta Be Mobile and Notebooks.com to go ahead and get a detailed look of the Sense user interface. Another cool feature that HTC included is the HTC Watch Store, which is essentially um, helps to augment the video offering on the Google Play Store for videos. Here you can go ahead, rent, and even purchase videos as well as TV shows for various uh, pricing depending on the shows and the content. And the nice part about this is that you can go ahead and even get a little bit of a description, the cast list, also the director of the film, and then for select videos you can also play the trailer. And then once you rotate into landscape mode, you can get a full screen image of the trailer. And of course, you can go ahead and open the kickstand. The one thing that you should notice here is that um, with the Super LCD 2.0 display, you'll notice that the colors and the uh, picture is very crisp and clear. And there's no pixelation whatsoever, as you can see here. 
Let's go ahead and open the browser. This is the HTC browser, so it's a little bit different than the Android browser, but essentially it's the same. You do get here the New York Times, and you can go ahead and enable Flash, so you can go ahead and play Flash videos. And you'll notice that even when the web page is fully zoomed out, what you get is you can still see even the smallest text Compared to the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S, I think the text is a little bit more pixelated and you can make out some of the pixels on the HTC um, 4G LTE compared to the Retina display on Apple's smartphone. However, even when it's fully zoomed out here, you can even read some of the smallest text um, fine, although you can zoom in and if you want to select an article, just tap on a link. The nice thing about the HTC browser compared to the iPhone browser is that you can go ahead and zoom in and then the text should resize to fit the width of the panel or of the display so that even when you're zoomed in fully, you don't have to scroll left or right to continue to read text so you can just flow with an up and down scrolling. And then it will fit as much text in as possible um, depending on your zoom level. This phone does have NFC support as well, so what that means is that this is a Google Wallet phone and Sprint is a Google Wallet partner, so here you can go ahead and pay for goods and merchandises just by tapping your phone to an NFC payment terminal. These are built into the credit card terminal, so rather than swiping your credit card when you're at a merchant such as The Gap, Banana Republic, Old Navy, Macy's, Bloomingdale's, or even McDonald's and CVS drugstores, you can just go ahead and tap your phone to those terminals and then it would read um, your credit card information there so you do have to store a credit card or preload a Google prepaid credit card on your device and it will go ahead and charge your purchases that way in the real world so Google Wallet is not only linked to making digital purchases such as those on the Google Play Store but now you can pay for your physical goods and merchandises in real actual physical retail stores as well the last thing to take a look at is the camera. HTC made a number of improvements with the camera, including, in, including building, building in a custom image sense uh, processor for the camera. What this does is it gives you zero shutter lag. So if you go ahead and tap and hold on the camera button, it will go ahead and take pretty much what we call a burst mode of pictures. So this is great for action shots. So here you can see you know, a number of different pictures that are snapped consecutively in just you know the one or two seconds that I held down the shutter button for and then you can go ahead and choose what the best shot is to save or you can go ahead and save everything as well so let's go ahead and just delete everything the other thing that's cool about the HTC image sense processor along with the um, the HTC EVO 4G LTE is that you can go ahead and record a video here as I'm doing and while the video is recording if you just tap the shutter button it will allow you to continue to take pictures while video is recording so now you don't have to choose between um, whether you, or not you want to record a video or taking a picture of whatever's happening at the same time you can do both at the same time and multitask that way there are also a number of different effects for um, HTC's um, EVO 4G LTE. So this gives you sort of like an Instagram effect. And if you want vin uh, a vintage look, grayscale, a sepia tone to your images, you can go ahead and create some of that uh, and record you know, with these filters added as well. You can also adjust a number of different settings such as um, choosing um, auto mode to get the best image um, without having to adjust too many settings. You can do macro shots, low light shots, group portraits or portraits, which will take a picture and focus in on faces um, that way. There's also an HDR mode, which does great with high dynamic range situations. And there's also a panorama feature, which will allow you to automatically capture panoramic images just by moving your phone um, from side to side. There's also a flash mode, so you can control the flash by leaving it on auto, turning it on or off as well. And in settings mode, you can go ahead and choose 
um, various different settings such as a self timer, um, choosing your image resolution so you can go ahead and go with a larger image for better detail or a smaller image to conserve storage space on your phone. And then you can ch uh, choose between VGA, a low resolution or full HD or even HD video recording for your video resolution. There's white balance ISO settings as well. The one thing that I noticed with the white balance is that uh, the device does have a difficult time of adjusting to uh, the white balance settings when you're indoors under artificial lighting. So it does come out sometimes to be a little bit more yellow or a little bit more green or blue depending on the artificial lighting around you. Outside in direct sunlight, the white balance setting does fine and works beautifully and you do get very crisp and clean um, images with the 8 megapixel camera and by far this is HTC's best camera and one of the best cameras on a smartphone today. The LED flash does automatically adjust its brightness so it's a variable lighting uh, flashlight so that means that um, you won't get overexposed shots because the flash is a little bit too bright. However, the flash isn't quite as bright or as good as some of the Xenon flash such as that on the Nokia N8 or even the Nokia 808 PeerView smartphones. What that means is that if you're taking pictures in the dark such as at a restaurant or a bar where the lighting condition isn't really that bright, um, you do get a little bit of noise and pixelation in your images. but um, it's still a lot better than some of the overexposed or even underexposed images that I've seen on some of HTC or other Android smartphones in the past. So this is a pretty good flash, but it's not a photographer's dream such as that on the 808 PeerView by Nokia. So essentially, um, another thing to take into consideration for serious photographers when using this camera is that although this is a dual stage uh, hardware button, meaning you can go ahead and um, push in lightly to focus and then push in again to capture an image. Unlike other dual stage camera button, there's no indication that um, the auto exposure or even the autofocus has locked. So you just have to rely on the camera that way. And partially it's due to the fact that the camera is all, always um, trying to get an autofocus lock so that there is zero shutter lag. So no matter what you're looking at or how you're tilting the camera, it's always trying to find the best exposure and the best focus. Um, there is tap to focus, so you can go ahead and tap in to focus. And then you can go ahead and see really quickly um, that it turns green to lock, but again, there's not really a strong indication that the focus has been achieved. And as a result, when you're taking um, macro images, let's go through to some of the images that I've taken before, um, you might come out with pictures that are not quite as sh uh, tack sharp as they should be. So here, I'm trying to focus in on that flower and you can see that although the background is focused, the flower still quite isn't as focused as it should be and there was no indication of that when you're trying to take the picture. So um, you can go ahead and preview the image after to see if your focus is on or if it's not on, um, but you can't really do that when you're taking the picture itself. Another feature that changed with HTC Sense specifically for the US market release is that um, before if you clicked on a link, say if it's a picture or if it's a map link, um, it will, there's a pop-up box that gives you options on how to open that link, whether you want it to open in Google Maps for instance or navigation for turn-by-turn -turn driving directions or a third-party app. Here I have Navigon preloaded so that would be an option as well. But now instead of deciding which app you want with each specific link on the fly, you have to go ahead and customize how you want uh, links to be handled. And part of that reason is with um, HTC's ongoing patent dispute with Apple. So Apple claims that it has the patent to allow users to decide on the go with how to associate different links with different apps. So now instead of having that option, you have to go ahead and predefine your app associations. So for instance, if you have a link with a physical address, now you have to go ahead and decide ahead of time if you want to open it with just the standard Maps app or if you want to open it with your custom uh, third-party proprietary uh, GPS navigation app, you can go ahead and do that. 
So now um, various different things such as phone numbers, email addresses, if you want to open it with mail or Gmail, um, streaming link if you want. All these have to be predefined um, and you can't go ahead and decide it every time you click on a link. So now after you predefine this, every time you click on an email address, for instance, it will automatically open it with the HTC Mail app rather than the Gmail app. Another thing that has changed as well with HTC Sense is how it handles emails. Before you have a little toolbar, toolbar here at the bottom which gives you um, greater flexibility in how you want to manipulate your email so you can go ahead and say go to a specific folder view right away just by scrolling the carousel at the bottom or going to view just your unread email messages. The toolbar offered uh, greater flexibility and a way to triage your emails in a, in a similar manner to how HTC and Windows Phone had it on devices such as the HTC Arrive on Sprint. Now, instead, um, it's a cleaner interface and um, there isn't really much in terms of options for triaging your email that way, but you do have um, ability to go ahead and dive into the menu to set priorities and other functions with Exchange. With the smartphone, I found that by turning off 4G LTE just by going into the settings and then going into your mobile network settings here, your wireless settings, you can go ahead and turn off 4G LTE so that you have better battery life. So instead of choosing LTE versus CDMA, um, by going into uh, CDMA only, I found that I was able to get over 20 hours of battery life on this phone with about, you know, four to five hours of using the phone with the screen completely on just for ebook reading and then having push email sent and various emailing tasks throughout the day. So I was using the phone normally, um, except for with heavy ebook reading, and I found that the phone lasted for over 20 hours on a single charge just on 3G only. Other users have noted that with uh, 4G turned on, um, battery life drained a lot quicker. The problem with that right now is that Sprint doesn't have a 4G LTE network on yet. It's still working on rolling out its 4G LTE network. So while the phone is searching for a 4G LTE radio, it might be using more battery than if it was actually connected to 4G LTE itself. Here, let's go ahead and open up a Google Playbook. And what you'll notice here, I found that the reading experience if you're an ebook reader on this 4.7 inch 720p HD display is actually very comfortable and it doesn't cause um, a lot of eye strain or eye fatigue. And it almost looks like um, it almost looks as good as an e ink display. Um, you can see on the Google Play app here that the background, the gray tone background, and the black text does really pop and make it um, very comfortable to read on your eyes. You can go ahead and download um, any other number of um, ebook applications, including Amazon Kindle or Barnes and Noble Nook as well. There is an FM radio. Um, and this phone does connect to, as we mentioned, both Sprint's forthcoming 4G LTE network whenever that rolls out, as well as the carrier's 3G CDMA network. Unlike the original HTC Evo 4G, this phone does not connect to WiMAX, so while we're waiting for 4G LTE, you can't roll back to WiMAX right now. So on 3G, unfortunately, what that means is that you won't get um, simultaneous voice and data connectivity until you get 4G rolled out. There's also a car mode, so once there's a dock, a car dock for this, you can go ahead and configure um, various different settings. These are more touch-friendly operations, so if you have this on your windshield, you can go ahead and tap and it will allow you to um, quickly enter into various important functions um, into your car without having to go ahead and look at text-based menu. So this is a little bit of a safer um, interface for you to use while you're driving if you need uh, quick access to your phone that way. I'm Chung Nguyen and let's go ahead and conclude this video with our final thoughts. 
So now that Sprint does have an iPhone in its lineup, the HTC EVO 4G LTE may not pack quite the same amount of punch as the original HTC EVO 4G did when it launched two years ago on the iPhone-less carrier. However, the HTC EVO 4G LTE will be one of the first smartphones to launch on Sprint with 4G LTE support. It also supports HD voice, which will enable for crisp and clear voice transmission. So voice will sound a lot more warm and a lot more pleasing both to the caller and to the receiver. And Sprint says it's working on industry-wide protocols to make sure that its HD voice capabilities will not only be efficient on bandwidth, but will also also be cross compatible with other carriers as well. We are still waiting for Sprint to launch HD Voice, a 4G LTE network, and so some of the features of the Sprint HTC EVO 4G LTE won't be available to the end user at least right away, so early adopters will have to wait. At $200 for the smartphone with a two-year contract, you will be getting a lot of bang for your buck, including a very nice display great camera features, awesome battery life on 3G right now, NFC capabilities, and a very modern interface on top of a modern Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich operating system. With, kick, with the novel features such as a kickstand, HTC Beats audio integration, um, and the excellent ImageSense camera, you're going to get a lot to love with the HTC EVO 4G LTE. There are still some minor quibbles about the smartphone, including the fact that you can't launch the camera quickly just by pushing and holding the shutter button when the screen is off or when the device is locked, and also the finicky white balance um, configuration that sometimes it doesn't really automatically detect white balance on the fly as well as a little bit of noise when you're taking images with the uh, variable lighting LED flash on the rear of the device. However, all that aside, the HTC EVO 4G LTE is still one of the best, if not the best, Android handset out there and it is one of the best smartphones on Sprint's lineup. For iPhone users who want a larger screen, the 4.7 inch HD display on the HTC EVO 4G LTE is the crowning star of the smartphone. The Super LCD 2 panel with IPS display allows for excellent viewing angles and also it allows for rich colors, vibrant colors, and true colors unlike with um, AMOLED displays which hypersaturate or oversaturate some of the color effects on the phone. Overall, the smartphone is an excellent value. Early adopters will need to be patient for Sprint to light up its 4G LTE network, and hopefully by the end of the year we're going to see more cities and more metropolitan areas be lit up with faster mobile broadband uh, connectivity. I'm Chung Wen, and on behalf of all of us here at GottaBeMobile and Notebooks.com, thanks for watching.